So again, today we decided to talk about uh, sewing machine needles. And people tend to forget about their needle. They're so focused on their fabric and their pattern and their batting and their quilting design that they kind of forget about one of the most important tools that is part of the quilting process, the needle. Okay, so you have to think of your needle as a tool, right? Mechanics don't have just one screwdriver. They open a drawer and they got hundreds of screwdrivers and hundreds of wrenches. A chef doesn't have just one knife. Could he prepare a meal with one knife? Sure. Is it easier if you have different knives that, that work better for different situations? Absolutely. Um, so when you think about machine needles, think of them as a tool as part of your, your quilting process. Different needles have different characteristics. They have different points. Um, the eye where the thread goes through is different. The groove, the groove in the front of the needle is going to be different sizes and shapes. And then the scarf, which is that indent, can also be different. Um, needles wear. They, they, can, they wear out quite fast. And so if you don't change your needle regularly, that's when you're going to come up with a lot of issues uh, with your quilting process. So something I found online is you should change your needle after eight hours of sewing. Yes, eight hours of sewing. That's not how long the needle's been in the machine. That's the time you've been sewing with that needle. Okay. That needle is going up and down up to a thousand stitches per minute. Some of them, the high speed straight, straight stitching machines can go up to 1500 stitches per minute. Okay, so let's do the math on that. Okay, if you have a thousand stitches per minute and there's 60 minutes in an hour, you're doing 60,000 stitches in an hour. If you use that needle for eight hours, that's 480,000 stitches. We're at almost a half a million stitches on one tiny little needle. That's a lot of stitches, okay? If you think back to that chef, if he only had one knife, then he took that knife and a half a million times, 500,000 times, he slammed the point of that knife onto his cutting board. What do you think is gonna happen to his point? It's gonna be dull. If he took that same knife and cut it back and forth a half a million times on the cutting board, it's going to be dull. Okay, the same thing is happening to your needle. I'm going to show you a little graphic here. Okay, and Elaine might have to bend in a little bit. It's kind of dark. So this is a picture of a needle from the start, and then it goes through different time phases. And this is at the end. And this was done under an electronic microscope. And you see how the tip of that needle is dull and flat, and the, the metal on the needle is starting to, to stray, um, kind of break apart, okay? So that's gonna affect all of your stitching. It's gonna affect your, the, the way the thread hooks on it. It's gonna make your tip dull, you're going to hear a popping sound. It's going to affect the eye of your needle. You'll get a burr in the eye of your needle, which is going to catch on your thread, which is going to make your thread break up at the top. Okay. Sometimes if you're having a lot of breakage, you need to change your needle, not change the tension. Okay. Or not necessarily change the thread. A lot of times it's the wear and tear in the needle. You know, if you ask people, when's the last time you changed the needle? When it broke. Well, you probably need to change it a little more often than that. If you hit something and it doesn't break, but it might have bent, so now it's not going to work properly. Okay? So just something to think about. Eight hours of stitching, a half a million stitches. That little needle is tired and he needs to be replaced. All right? Next, we're going to talk about the different parts of the needle. So here's a little graph. So obviously the butt of the needle is a flat part that you push up to um, a stopper within your needle shaft, okay? The top of it is beveled a little bit just so you can get it in. The next part 
is the shank of the needle. And those are all usually the same size. Okay, some of them for domestic machines, the back of it is flat, just so we know what the, to put the flat side of it to the back. Um, with the industrial machines, it's not, it's sometimes rounded or a groove on the front instead of the flat. But most of them that we work with um, are flat on the back. And then I'm gonna skip down to the blade or the shank of the, or I'm sorry, the shaft or the blade, uh, blade or shaft of the needle. And that's gonna be how thick the needle is. So when we have different needles, and there's different sizes. So this one is a 8012. This one is a 7010. So that number is going to tell you how big or how thick that shaft is. So the smaller the number, the thinner the shaft. If you're dealing with heavier fabrics, you might want to have a heavier shaft. If you're dealing with chiffons or silks or something, you might want to go with a smaller shaft so that the hole is just a little bit smaller. The numbers down here, the 70 is going to be your European number and the 10 is going to be your American number. So that's kind of like when you look inside your shoes and you see different sizes. Um, they're, they're equivalent, they're the same, it's just two different countries numbering system. Okay, so you have your, sh your shank that goes into the machine, the blade or the shaft that is your thickness, in between is the shoulder and that's just taking the difference from the standard size down to whatever thickness that that blade is going to be okay the next thing is that groove on the front of your needle and that's what it holds your thread in place so that it can go right into the eye of the needle properly that groove will also be different thicknesses and different lengths depending upon the different needles and the type of thread that you usually use with those needles Okay, next over here we have the scarf, which is that indent on the back of your needle. And that's where your hook down in your bobbin case kind of floats into that indent to hook the thread and tie the knot. And again, this scarf, there's gonna be different needles that have different size bumps to, to create different size loops for it to, to hook up better. Then we have the eye of the needle and the point of the needle. The eye of the needle, again, will be different shapes and different sizes for different needles because of thread thickness. And your point is gonna be different depending upon the type of fabric that you're using with it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch around now and I'm gonna be showing you some different needles that we got. Okay. So the first thing I have is going to be the material that the needles are made out of. So your standard needles, this one here, is made out of nickel. You know, your, your standard everyday kind of the cheap little packets are just straight nickel. It's a fine metal, but it's not as strong as some of the other ones. Okay, the next is the chrome plated needle. And so what that is, is they t they're taking a nickel needle and they're plating it with chrome. Okay, that's gonna give you less friction on the thread as it passes through the eye of the needle. It's gonna penetrate your fabric with less resistance. It's gonna create smoother stitches and it's gonna help with heat resistance because think about that thread running through that needle eye. It actually gets hot. The friction from the thread through the needle will create heat. That can also bend your needle a little bit so sometimes just if you're really stitching at high speed, you may need to change your needle a little more often. And then the last one is titanium needles. We carry the, the organ company for those. All the other needles that we carry in the shop are gonna be the Schmetz brand. Titanium again is that nickel plated with a ceramic, a ceramic nitride, titanium nitride ceramic, okay? It improves the, resist, the resilience of the, the needle so that that speed and pounding, it makes it the hardest, okay? So a titanium needle is gonna be two and a half times harder than a chrome. And it's gonna be four times harder than a nickel. The negative on that is if it does break, it shatters. Typically when you break one of these two needles, the tip will break off, but the shaft remains whole. 
With the titanium one, it can break up into three, four, five, six little pieces. Now you have to try to make sure that you find all those little pieces down in your bobbin case or down in your machine so you're not creating a different issue by having tiny bits of needles down inside your machine, okay? So again, you have your nickel, your chrome plated, down just oh, a little bit lower. your nickel, your chrome plated nickel, and your titanium plated nickel. Okay, so those are the different materials that they use in making needles. Okay, now we're going to talk about the different um, types of needles. So years ago, you pretty much had, and I'm going to even put both of these up there, I think. Can you see them both? Yes. Okay, you had either a sharp needle or you had your ballpoint needle, right? Sharp needles were used for woven fabrics, things like cotton or denim, where you're taking single strands and weaving them together. Your knits were used for like t-shirts or something that's you know kind of stretchy like this. Again, think knitting. It's not weaving strands like on a loom, but it's taking and looping fabric within each other, so more like knitting. Okay, so these were the two needles that you would use. You would have the, the sharps that had the really sharp point on it and a medium length eye. And then you would have the ball point. So you see how much more rounded that is. That's so it would go in between the loops and not cut through the loops of the knit fabric. Okay, nowadays they've taken these two needles and made what they call a universal needle, okay? So that's gonna be this one here. A lot of people think that the word universal means, oh, it's good works in any sewing machine. And actually what it means is it works on any um, fabric. So you can switch from a cotton fabric to a knit fabric without having to change your needle. So it's kind of the hybrid of, it's not as sharp as a sharp, and it's not as rounded as a, as a ballpoint. So again, I'm just gonna hold up those three so you can kind of see the difference between the different points. Okay. So then we're gonna move on to the quilting needle. So this needle has a special taper on the point of it that makes it really good for, for quilting that tapered point is gonna make it easier to go through all of those layers, including your fabric, your batting, and especially if you have a lot of seams, that thinner taper to it really makes it easier to punch it through those heavy seams intersections that we kind of hear when we're quilting, right? You hear that pounding sound. So this'll make that be easier on your machine. So next we have the top stitch needle, which again is gonna be similar to this quilting needle, but the point is even sharper, the eye is longer, and that, that groove that's in here is gonna be larger and wider. They do that because for top stitching, they're assuming you're using a heavier thread and that you're just gonna need the bigger eye and the wider groove so that you don't have any restriction to your thread flowing through the eye. And then again, they're assuming you're going through a lot of different, that was me, a lot of different layers so they give you that extra sharp point on it. The next one is gonna be the denim needle. So that's gonna be the heaviest, sturdiest shaft. Obviously, when you're going through denim, especially if you're going through multiple layers, like at a seam on a pair of jeans, you really need a heavy shaft. It's gonna be a sharp point, but it's gonna be a little bit smaller eye so that it holds that thread in place as it's going through so you don't have any slapping around of your thread. The next one is gonna be the leather needle, okay? So this one, we're showing kind of a side view of it. Um, and it's hard to see on the diagram. I don't know if I bring it further. It's actually got almost like a little blade on the sides of it, okay? 
so that as it goes through the leather, leather, it doesn't punch a hole, but actually cuts a tiny little slit because leather isn't a fiber, a, you know, a woven or knit fiber. So it, it has those tiny sharp little blades on the side so that you, you cut that little slit to make it easier. Um, it's also because leather can be very thick and tough and you just need to have more of a knife rather than just a, a needle. <clears throat> the next one is going to be the embroidery needle. So again, we're going to have a wider eye and a wider groove so that the thread can travel at that high speed of rate that embroidery machines do. It's also that the scarf, that lump on the back side, um, it's a larger bump and that will help to minimize the skip stitches that occur when the fabric is bouncing up and down in the hoop. Okay, so because your fabric can be bouncing, you need to give it a little bit bigger scarf on the back so that the hook has a little bit bigger loop of thread to catch on to. Okay. And the next one is going to be our metallic thread. Again, metallics can be kind of fussy because they actually have metal in them. So if your, your needle eye is too small or your, your shaft is, your, um, the groove in the front is a little too small, it's gonna break your thread. So these have a super long eye and they polish the eye to make sure that it's really smooth because you don't wanna get any burrs in your eye. Um, eye of your needle okay because that will break your thread immediately okay and then the longer groove is going to help prevent the shredding of, of the thread as it as it feeds into the eye of the needle and then the last sample I have <clears throat> these are fairly new we just got these in it's a non-stick needle so Basically, they're taking a universal needle and they're putting a coating on it so that it doesn't stick to um, the different stabilizers that you can use. Like if you're using heat and bond or some of those applique type things and your needle gets all gummed up, the, the coating on this needle is going to be um, have a, a non-stick resistance to it. Okay. So those are the different needles that we carry here at the Sewing Basket. Um, most of them that we carry are the chrome because we just feel it's a little bit better needle, but a lot of them are still that, uh, just the regular nickel. Um, and then we do carry the titanium needle in the organ from the organ company. Again, think about your needle and when you change it and how often you change it. A pack of needles is anywhere from $4 to maybe seven dollars okay you have just spent you know you could have spent a couple hundred dollars if you're making a king or a queen size quilt you have two three four hundred dollars invested in product you got hours and hours and hours invested in time so don't forget to change out that one or two dollar needle to make the project come out much much better right the last thing I want to show you is this is just a little gadget we have because this is the other issue is you have all of these needles at home and it's great when they're in the package <clears throat> and the package says what it is. But once you take it out of the package and then you swap it out in your machine and now you don't know what your needle is. And yes, most of them have little color codes on the shaft, but I don't remember what color means what anyway. So we got these little um, needle, needle organizers in. So it gives you all the different types of needles and all the different sizes. So if I'm at home, wherever my pin is, that's the needle that's in my machine. So right now it's telling me I have a size eight universal in there. If I take that needle out of my machine, I don't know if we got one sitting here. Here we go, nope. We're gonna pretend this is a sewing machine needle. If I take it out of my machine, I'm going to put it in here and then whichever needle, and I just set my pin down and I lost it. <laughs> I got this. 
So whatever needle I would take out of here, say I'm gonna do a denim needle, a size eight, I would put my pin in there to know which one is now in my machine. So these are really nice if you say you're going to a retreat or something like that and you don't wanna to have to take packages and packages of needle, you can just load up different ones in here and just take this one little um, piece with you. But it, it really helps to keep yourself organized so you know what you're working with. So when you need a specialty needle, you know you're working with the right one. All right, so that's what we have for our talk today on needles. I hope we, you, you learned something that you didn't know before today. And uh, hopefully by next week we have our, our technical issues with broadcasting onto the Sewing Basket site fixed. And otherwise, we will see you next week. Bye.